So Christmas day is over for another year. It is now Boxing Day, driving ranges are back open, golf courses could be back open depending on the weather, and you've got a brand new set of golf clubs for Christmas. Guys, in this video, I mean, that's, a, to new set. that's a totally different story, but I actually did a video with these on my main channel, guys, and if that video gets to a certain amount of views, I will use these for the whole of this season. Well, guys, if you have got new golf clubs, first of all, congratulations, it's a fantastic time. I'm, re I'm always really excited about getting new golf clubs. Obviously, I work in golf and I spend my time with golf clubs but it never ever gets old on me it never never gets boring the idea of getting new clubs so if you've got new irons today we're going to give you just a really few quick simple drills you can do to bed those irons Ooh, in look at that chip butty going behind you james Chips. Ooh, look at that Ooh. ketchup as well Ooh. guys because there's nothing better than getting new irons but you want to make sure you do bed them in make sure you know the distances make sure you're striking them well hopefully you were custom fitted for them hopefully you know what shafts you've got in them hopefully you know what lie angles you've got hopefully you know what shaft length more you've got chip butties. more chip butties That'll be us in a and minute. And it's your butties going, George. I'm going to say. Hopefully you know what shaft length you've got and all those things add up to the perfect set of golf clubs. But you just want to get your eye back in. It's been a long Christmas. We've all eaten and drunk a lot of chip butties. So what can we do? The first drill I'm going to give you guys is a really simple one. It's one of my favourite drills that I do. And it's actually something which I got taught as a junior golfer. And it really helped me, I'd say, transform my ball striking. Because the key here is that we want to compress the ball into the ground. But we can't do that if the takeaway isn't quite right. So I'm going to set up a ball a few inches behind the ball that I'm going to hit here. And all I'm going to do is work on getting that takeaway correct because one thing I see so often in lessons or if we are playing in pro-ams or just playing with, with general golfers is the takeaway can sometimes be very, very steep here. That's going to put you in a position where, unfortunately, you're not going to be able to get the Look desired the impact. Did you see that, that there? Yeah? Unbelievable. I've got a gym membership for Christmas, Chris. <laughs> oh, dear. From there, generally, you might drop it inside. You might even come the same way down, come a little bit over the top. That's obviously not going to get the strike you want or the shot shape or direction you want. Other people may whip it inside here. That's what I've been commonly known to do. So if you do whip it inside, then generally what we see is a rounded motion where it wants to work the opposite way on the way down. I do see people who sometimes whip it back through, but again, that's not going to give you the desired strike or shot you want to hit. In an ideal world, we will just roll that ball back nice and straight. And what that does, you see how that ball has gone directly behind me there. I might put a basket there or put something there just to stop it. But if I show you that from down the line, you'll see how that then puts key to get in the posture first like I'm just trying to get nice and comfortable that then puts the club in a much better position on the way back all I'm thinking about is that club face so it's really important to me that that leading edge is square to my spine angle here the last thing I want to do is yes get the takeaway right but flip the club open here because all that's going to do is then something else is going to have to deviate throughout the swing in order to let you do that and you can actually do this and hit balls at the same time obviously have something behind you so you're not wasting your range balls they are not the cheapest thing in the world anymore but from here I can then almost think right that's where I want it now I can set to the top and then I can go through and just hit the shot and that helps me not only get a nice rhythm so I'm thinking right I know that takeaway is right from there I can load up to the top and then from there get it through that stops people Chris does a really good analogy of this where you see people who think well I need to swing the club fast to hit long balls and the backswing has to be incredibly fast I couldn't tell you what happened to my backswing I couldn't tell you if it went out I couldn't tell you if it went in but if you just use that simple drill with the ball guys that can really really help you set the club perfectly on the way back after a little bit of a, a break and from there Chris is now going to give you another tip on sequencing that is absolutely disgusting, Chris. Needs a Christmas clean. It does need a Christmas clean. However, yours will be brand new and they will be clean and they will have not been hit on mud and they won't need cleaning, so we're all right. But we're going to talk sequencing now, guys. So you need to think about, right, if I'm coming down to the driving range, everybody wants to hit the new irons a bit further. They want to strike it better. And everyone says, well, your sequencing's a little bit out. So we need to give you a drill that you can improve that because everybody says, okay, yep, yeah, you can set the club, we can get it up to the top, we can bring it down, and you know, right, that's a good sequence, right, I've hit a shot there, yeah, that's great, that's a six iron, it's gone 100 yards. That's realistically, yes, if we can repeat that movement over and over again, it is going to improve your sequencing, however, it doesn't really translate to the golf course, it's very hard to do that, that's a six iron, it's only gone 120 yards, you probably wanting to hit this well over 150 potentially, 
and from there we're just going to be losing distance we're going to get very much into positions oh it's perfect at the top yeah it's perfect there oh again that's a nice little draw i'd love to see that on the golf course but not at 100 yards so let's give you something that is more of a motion so we want to get you doing something that is getting the sequencing all together in one motion like a golf swing so we're going to do the step drill so you'll have seen people like podrick harrington do this uh, I'm trying to think of others, even DeChambeau have done this to gain speed because it helps him with his sequence. And what we'll do is we're going to set up to a golf ball just as we would normally. So this is a six iron. You can start this with a smaller club. So do start this maybe with your nine iron, with an eight iron or even a pitching wedge. We're going to take our normal setup, normal stance with. And then what we're going to do is we're going to step back towards our right foot. So we're going to bring the club back so it's in line with our feet. And what we're trying to do now is as we take this club away, we're going to step towards our target. But we're trying to step back to where our stance would be normally. Again, one thing I see a lot of times is people go, right, okay, I've got to step. We're not going to be able to hit the <laughs> well, you ball. Your trousers then. I know it was close. We're not going to be able to hit the ball from here. At the fatty, they miss strike it, or the club even bounces over the ball. Not great. And again, we've seen, I've seen very different versions of this. Again, Mark Parry, he was one who we saw, he'd step together, he would try and hit it, and then step after it. Not a great motion, we've mishit that, we've misstruck it because the body's behind, we've stepped after, that's not going to help our sequencing. Again, we have to get that timing correct. So, normal stance, guys, and then just practice to start with. Right, as I take the club away, I step, and I'm stepping back to where I was. So, a couple of those... And then what we're going to do is we're going to step and hit that. And we're going to be back exactly where my stance was to start with. So from here, then we can think, right, good strike there. Stance was back to exactly where we wanted it to. And that timing was good. Potentially, sometimes we might miss a few out to the right. If I get my sequence in and I don't let the club head catch up or it goes ever so slightly wide, the club is still going to be open and it's gonna leave it out to the right. So we've got to get that timing correct, and this is why I suggest start with a pitching wedge. Start with something you're not swinging as fast as a six iron, but we can come in again, take our setup, back together, and then in time, nice and smooth. And again, in balance. You'll see that I can hold my finish. I'm in a strong position. Left foot is exactly where it should be in your finish position, and everything's turned to my target because I've been able to sequence correctly. Again, if we talk about it briefly, what it's doing is, again, the first thing we want to see go away in the backswing is your chest and arms. So that works. And what we're doing there is we're getting that lower body sequencing already towards our target before we've started the downswing. So somebody like Rory McIlroy, you'll see he starts, he squats a little bit, but he's already starting with that lower body and then we can get a lot of speed out into that club head. So give this a go, guys. It's something that you want to try on the driving range. You can try it. It's easier on a mat to start with, then build it up if you've got a grass range, get onto the grass and do that. But start to be nice and comfortable with doing it with all your clubs. And we'll start you to see you strike it better and get some more speed. See you tomorrow.